Amen. Y'all ready for some of the word? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can bring it up. Amen. All right. Why don't you welcome our, our youth pastor, Pastor Wes. Amen. Amen. How y'all doing? Y'all can have a seat. Amen. Something good is going to happen tonight. It's not because of me, but it's because God is going to work through me. Amen. Amen. You know, I want to I tell you a story about a gentleman in a minute. Um, I met him yesterday, but I want to pray for him. He's actually, I actually met him yesterday, but he's in the hospital um, right now. His name's Mr. Jenkins, so we can all just pray for him. Lord, I just thank you uh, for uh, me meeting Mr. Jenkins yesterday. Lord, I call him a blessed and highly favored man. I call him healed right now. Uh, Lord, would uh, let everything that was wrong be corrected, and in Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I know something good is going to happen, and I, I know this message is for someone, and it's for me too, because the devil, the devil has been, ha, ha, the devil does not want me to preach tonight. The devil, I, I, I've, I've recognized that for the last week or so. The devil has been really uh, hard at, at work. Amen. So I met this man named Mr. Jenkins yesterday. I was working. And uh, on my job, I can be a little bit miserable because I just don't like it sometimes too much, just being honest. And I'm working and I'm doing a work. And he's an, he's an, old, an older gentleman, about 79. And uh, he comes out, and he's following me around, and as I'm upgrading his services. And uh, we, he just starts chit-chatting with me. And, uh, you know, I always wear my bracelet with my, with my cross on it because it always, people always, they always ask or they talk about Jesus. You know, it's, it's just a, it's a, w a way for me to talk because I can't bring it up. So uh, I was talking to him. Well, we were just chit-chatting about the, about the job, and I was turning to leave and then packing my tools up and he says Wes are you going to heaven and I turned to him right away and I said absolutely Mr. Jenkins and, he, and, and from that moment on we went, in, we went into like a 30 minute conversation see so it was, it was, it was God you know what I mean you know and this guy I, I found myself really discouraged and I found this gentleman really encouraged me this 79-year-old man, he's a, a jail minister, travels around the country, going to jail, going to prison ministry, and uh, plays guitar. He's 79 years old, been born again forever, is a truck driver, and he just starts telling me his story, and it was just, uh, it was amazing. As he's talking to me, I was like, I was laughing inside. I'm like, you know, I'm like, God, you, did, you, did, you showed up again on, on me, because right now, I was, because when he asked me, I said yes, but I was almost starting to tear up because I was in that moment where I was just dealing with some stuff, and this guy really ministered to me, really did, and I'm just so thankful, and um, <laughs> his services went down, so they, his wife calls me up, and, and I'm going home at yesterday, yesterday, and she's in a panic, and I'm like, I'm, I'm like literally I, I'm almost at my house, you know, I can't help you right now, but I said I'll come back tomorrow morning. And uh, she said, okay. She said, we're going to be in the hospital. I didn't know they were going to be in the hospital for anything. They didn't tell me. So uh, I go back out today. I fix it, get it working. And uh, he went in for surgery and had a, um, a stent put in. You know, and then I, I, I started talking to his wife, and I got to pray for her. You know, and I walked away. I left that house today. I was driving home. I was in a rush. And I, and I, and I, and, um, I said, man, you know, God, thank you for letting me encounter the people you let me encounter. You know, thank you for having mercy on me. And, and you know, I walked uh, tonight, I was like, you know, tomorrow morning I'm going to call up Mr. Jenkins and I'm going to ask him how he's doing. And, uh, you know, I tell that story because you just never know who you're going to meet. You never know who you're going to come across that 
that person didn't look like a person that was, was going to influence me or have anything that I would have in common with him. But, man, he really, he really was awesome. And so it's so important for us in our Christian walk. Uh, yeah, we go through trials. We go, we go through ups and downs. But um, to be open and to talk about our Christianity to people, you know, and um, I just think it's awesome because I know God put Mr. Jenkins in my life yesterday, you know, when I was down. And I thank God for that. Amen. So, so I got some good news. I got some real good news. The devil's a liar. <laughs> I'm not going to let him win. Matthew 27. Matthew 27. sir. He ain't going to win. He ain't going to beat me up. No more. In this, in this chapter, it's a very long chapter. It, some of you might know it. Some of you don't. You can read through it. I'm not going to read the whole thing through, to you, but I'm going to come. We're going to start right here. I'm going to start at verse 29. When you're there, say there. Amen. Amen. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him. They mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him. And they took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they mocked him. They took the robe off from him. And they put his own remnant, remnant on him. And led away to crucify him. In this chapter, it's talking about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And they crucified him in part, 20, verse 35. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken to by the prophet, that parted by the garments among them upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there and and set up over his head and his acquisition written, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Verse 38. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another to the left. And they, and they that passed by revealed him, waging their heads. So, Our subject tonight is the three crosses. The three crosses. Everybody knows, does everybody have an idea of what the crucifixion looked like for the most part in their mind? If you do, raise your hand. Amen. Ariel, weren't you at, didn't you uh, visit where where they believed he was, Jesus was crucified? So you've seen your, you put your eyes on it. So this is like real, 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 real. You know what I mean? That's really cool. So how about this? How about how about Vern? Come on up. Tony, come on up. So I, I want you to really visualize this stuff. Vern, I want you to go on this side over here. Pastor Tony on this side. Amen. And somebody real tall. Tom, real tall. Right here in the middle. The paperwork can wait. Wait, don't worry. Bush will handle it. He's back there eating McDonald's. <laughs> That's an inside joke. <laughs> Amen. So, so in Matthew, they're talking about the crucifixion, and we have Jesus in the middle. He's already up on the cross. He has the thief to his left and the thief to his right. These are mighty men. They're not thieves. Amen. <laughs> Jesus and that mustache. That's funny. <laughs> I can't even look at Tom and be serious. So, so does everybody get that visualization of the crucifixion and the three crosses? Amen. Go sit down, guys. Thank you. You're awesome. Good Jesus. <laughs> so those three, counting Jesus and the two thieves, they were crucified that day and died. And it's believed that the reason why they, bear, why they crucified Jesus with a couple of thieves, common thieves, 
because they didn't, they didn't believe in anything that he was, really. He was just a common nomad, no man. He just he moved land, city, town to town. So they didn't really care. They put him like, like he was just no one special. You know, amen? These three deaths were all different. All very different. See, the man on the left, on, that le- on, on the left, you're facing the cross. The man on the left here, he was hardened. He was hardened. He had a hard spirit. He was angry, bitter. He cursed Jesus. He made fun of him. This man's on the cross. He's about to die. He's mocking the man in the middle who's Jesus Christ. That cross, that's a hard cross. That's a hard cross. That's a cross of rebellion. Cross of rebellion. The man on the right Another thief talks in the Bible how he watches Jesus. He watches how, how God, he ta- asks God to forgive them of their, of, the, of their sins. The man on the right had a cross of repentance. Because he told him, I'm not going to take you to the scripture, but he told him and, and he told Jesus, remember me. Remember me. The cross of Repentance. So, you know, and Jesus in the middle, he represents the cross of redemption. Three crosses, same crucifixions, but three different deaths. Three different deaths. So, as we live this life, day in, day out, as we live, go around our lives, You know, are you dealing with anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, sin, uh, alcohol, drugs, addiction? See, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, is that you know, the gospel is the same to all three of those men. It doesn't differ. You know, Jesus, he will never, never forsake us. He will never leave us alone. And we're going to, you and I, we're going to have to carry our cross while we're on this land. We're going to carry our cross. And you're going to have problems that tells you in the Bible, problems are going to come. Issues are going to come. Liars, thieves, uh, addiction, it's here. It's not a pretend world. It's real. It's here. It's tangible. So you're going to have to carry your cross. You're going to have to carry your cross. Amen? But What's God, what, what God wants us to do is he wants us to take the cross and give it to him. He wants us to give all these things to him and to walk with him. See, it's real clear when you look at it. It's real clear. See, we're either two things. When you're looking at the cross, you're looking at the crucifixion, we're either, we're either the cross of rebellion or we're the cross of repentance. There really isn't an in-between you know, you can look around, but, but there really is an in-between. It's really one or the other. You know, which thief are you? Which thief have you been? God wants to set you free. He wants to set me free. He wants to set us free. He wants us to live for him. Even though we're not perfect people, God wants us to turn, ask for forgiveness, and live for him. Amen? Amen? The middle cross, the cross of redemption, it redeems us from the curse of the law. It redeems our family. 
It redeems our kids. It redeems our house. It redeems us from the past, the shame, and the guilt. You know, Faith Home, men and women, it's a long, 18 months is a good journey. But it's a journey where you can really find yourself. You can find yourself broken, humiliated. But there's another side of that story where you can be set free from all that stuff. That's the good news. You know, sometimes we, we, we look at people and we judge them. And yeah, you, you judge them. I want to read something to you. Hang on, I want to, oh, man. I want to read something to you that I think is so cool. Let me see my phone. I just got to read this to you. This is something so neat. Sorry for the interruption. I think I lost it. Man, it's really good. Oh, well. Oh, well. But, but you know, but Jesus, he's a cross of redemption. He came to save us from, our, from ourselves, from our sin. And in this journey that you and I are in, we have to learn to surrender. Amen. We have to learn to surrender and just give it all to Jesus Christ. See, in Isaiah, go to with me to Isaiah 53, 5. When you're there, say amen. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment required for our well-being fell on him. And by his stripes, his wounds, we are healed. Jesus died on that cross. I heard someone say, well, why, he could, why couldn't he just come down from the cross? That would have been a better miracle. But no, you're really missing the point. Because he came to this earth, God sent his only son to come to this earth and let him be crucified and die on the cross, humiliated for you and I. And when you really grasp that, that the man died on the cross for our sins, man, we got we to gotta turn ourselves around. There's so much more work to do. There's so much more... Chris, there's so much than just being a good person. Lewis, there's so much more to do than just being a good person. We, we're on a mission from Jesus Christ. We're on an assignment. You know, we're, we, we're not just here to come go to our job and come to church. We're, we, we're, on, we're on a mission, man. We're on an assignment. And some of us got to find our assignment. Whether it be you got to go help your neighbor build their house, whether you got to go help a homeless people, or whether you just got to go help the pastor of the church. We got to find our assignment. So many people are like wandering around like nomads with no land, no country, nowhere to go. You know, I mean, a lot of Christians who just bounce around the church to church to church and they go here and they go there. And when you talk to them, they don't really have they're not really affiliated with anything. They're a no they're a nomad. They're a, they're a Christian nomad. You know, and God has called us to work together for his kingdom. Amen? But we do have to battle flesh. That is a reality. We have to battle flesh. We have to battle the cross of rebellion. Amen? And even though sometimes we're great 30, 40, 50 year Christians, you're going to battle flesh because things are going to come. Things are going to arise. And we have to be, you have to be ready for that. 
Amen? I thank God. I, I just thank God for sending Jesus Christ. I thank him, Luther. I thank him, man. Because, man, I, I would not be able to do this on my own. No way. Amen? Amen? But tonight, it's not a long message. It's not nothing fancy. It's, it's just really, really simple. Abby, you can get ready. It's really simple. Because, see, the truth is the gospel is really simple. And we, we as humans, we can't, we can't complicate it. Amen? And, and, and we, we try to put too much of our hands and mixture in the Bible, and we got to stop. We got to stop. We got to just go and do what God wants us to do. Amen? We got to save the lost. Amen? Faith home. Your life changes right now. It changes right now. Amen? Church, change your life. Turn it for, you know, I I. I 2017 is around the corner, a week from, to, week from um, well, about a week and a half. You know, everybody's always talking about diets and exercising and, and all that, and that's good and that's great, but maybe we need to exercise our Christianity. I, I, I do. I do. I raise my hand. I'm re- I, I'm, I need to. Amen. I need to exercise my praying. I need to exercise, you know, Sharing Christ to people, you know, because that is what our that is where our faith is, right? You know, and sometimes I measure my I look at myself and I measure myself up, and I'm like, man, you know. I heard I heard a really famous preacher ask a really hard question, and it really it sat with me hard for years, and he said, "When's the last time you led someone to Jesus Christ?" When's the last time you led someone to Jesus Christ? And man, I, I knew the answer. And it was bad. Real bad. And my challenge tonight to you is what are you doing? Are you all, are you are you in are you dabbing with the cross of rebellion? Or are you on the cross of repentance? Amen. We're not perfect people. You're gonna make mistakes. We're gonna make errors. We're gonna have sh- shortcomings we're gonna have little failures but the key always the failure is getting right back up but it's not just always getting back up to stand to stand on your own two feet it's getting back up and ask god to forgive you and then you move see a lot of people they think getting back up is just getting back up on your feet and you just keep on moving no it's get back up god i failed i'm sorry it's a cross of repentance because, see, if you keep trying to do it on your own, you're going to keep finding yourself at the cross of rebellion. And the cross of rebellion is hard. It's a hard, that thief, that thief who died on that cross, he died with a hardened heart. He died mean-spirited. He died on the cross crucified. Moments before he was going to be crucified, he was mocking Jesus Christ. Don't be caught being that thief. Even with all your good things, your good intentions, and your, and your, your good Christian lingo, don't get caught being that thief. The spirit of rebellion is, is deep. We must stay away from it. Amen? God has called us for so much more. And my challenge to you tonight, my challenge to you tonight is, is not to come up here and get prayed for by me. But my challenge for you tonight is to come up here on this altar and ask God for repentance. Ask God to help you. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to touch you with anger. Touch you with the the bitterness that you have. Touch you with the hurt that you have. With the hurt that you've been carrying. With the hurt that's, that's so heavy that you don't even know what your next move is. God wants you to let it go tonight at this altar. It's almost Christmas Day, Christmas Eve. There's not a better time to get right with Jesus Christ. Because many of us are going to see our family. Many of us are going to sit around a table. We're going to eat. We're going to laugh. But but if you're empty inside, if you're, if you're carrying all these hurts, if you're carrying the shame from the past, if you're carrying these things, 
then it's just nothing but a regular dinner on a nice different day. And everybody dresses up. So tonight, I'm asking you to come to this altar as Abby leads us in, in worship right here. And I want you to ask God for forgiveness. Ask him to touch your life again. Yes, some of you have been Christians for a long time. I have too. I was born again in 95. But the truth is, we all need Jesus Christ every day of our lives. Amen? Go ahead, Abby. Yes, thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I stand here yeah. with arms wide open. Thank you, Jesus. Don't be ashamed. I I'm right here. I'm, I'm right here on the altar, too. Don't be ashamed. God loves you. Jesus loves us. That's why he died on the cross for our sins. Don't miss this opportunity. God didn't want me to tell you this tonight. I mean, the devil did not want me to tell you this tonight. God did. The devil did not want me to give you this message tonight. Jesus loves you with all his heart. You have a, if you got a prayer tongue, we're speaking that prayer tongue right now. We're going to declare freedom in your life right now. We're going to declare shame broken right now in the name of Jesus.
right now. I pray for all the people that came up for healings, Lord. I pray for their family members. I pray you would touch them right now. Give them peace. Lord, give the doctors wisdom. Give the do God guide the doctor's hands, Lord. Lord, I pray for every individual in this church, Lord, that they would be blessed. They're, they're, they'll be set free from any bondages. Lord, I pray for the, the cross of repentance to come on each one of us, Lord, to get us away from the cross of rebellion so we can turn to the cross of redemption. Jesus Christ himself, Lord. I thank you for the, the pastors of this church. I thank you for the praise team. I thank you for the sound booth. I thank you for the ushers. We claim everyone in this house highly blessed and highly favored in Jesus' name. Amen. For, but I remember seeing something that struck me. It may not be this one, but uh, it's this. The Bible says a good man falls, you know, seven times, but he gets back up, right? So when you fall, what do you do? You get up. But you know what you do immediately after you get up? You fall again. You know how, right? On your knees. Amen. amen. Get up and fall again, but this time on your knees. Amen. amen. I don't think that's the one, but there's others. I, I was... I was thumbing through this one, but that's a, that's a good one. You fall, get up, and then fall again on your knees. Amen. Praise be to God. Y'all blessed this evening? Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Warehouse will be open now. Amen. So, Hallelujah will be here Friday night. Amen. So, come on out. And we'll be having church on Christmas Sunday. We'll be having communion Christmas Sunday morning. Amen. Hallelujah. So, amen. Stand up and let me, let me speak blessings over your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak the blessing. The empowerment to succeed over everyone here. See, I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. 
I know that Jesus is my Lord. Amen. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think, according to the power of the works in us. Amen. God bless you. We love you.